All right, so for our lesson today, we're going to be talking about three specific types of parallelograms. Like I said last time, we're learning about a hierarchy of shapes. So a parallelogram is just an overarching type of or a broad generalization of a shape that has four sides where uh, the sides of them are parallel. We're going to be learning about three types of parallelograms. We have a rectangle. It's a parallelogram, but a special type. A square, which is also a parallelogram, but a special type. And then a rhombus, which is, again, also a parallelogram, but a special type of parallelogram. So first, we're going to talk about a rectangle. I'm sure you guys know what a rectangle looks like, right? Pretty generic stuff, right? But when you guys draw a rectangle, what is it about a rectangle that you always make sure to include that qualifies it as a rectangle? <laughs> yes? Two sides are long and two sides are short. So. It's not like it's clear. Yes, so how would I mark that? The opposite sides. Okay, so remember, that's something we know about a parallelogram, right? Opposite sides are congruent. So that's what qualifies a rectangle to be a parallelogram. Well, partially, that's why it's a parallelogram. What else is unique about a parallelogram, or sorry, a rectangle? Besides it just having that. It doesn't yes. have. All the angles are congruent, right? What kind of angles does it have? 90 degree angles. So that's what's unique about a rectangle, right? The definition of a rectangle is a parallelogram. with four congruent angles. Which if you want to put in parentheses, 90 degrees, it has to, they all have to be 90 because since it's a parallelogram, four angles all being equal means that they're 90 each. All right, so that's the definition of a rectangle, is that all of those angles are equal. Um, now, because it's a parallelogram, everything that we know about a parallelogram from last lesson applies to a rectangle. So everything that we learned last time, the diagonals bisect each other, the opposite sides are congruent, the opposite angles are congruent, the consecutive angles are supplementary. All that stuff that we learned yesterday still work for a rectangle because a rectangle is a parallelogram. But there's also one extra thing that is unique to a rectangle that not every parallelogram has. It has to be a rectangle in order to have this other unique um, idea. So first, let's remind ourselves of what a parallelogram has, right? So what's the definition of a parallelogram again? Just the definition, not property, just the definition. Yeah, okay, so opposite sides are parallel. That's just using the definition of a parallelogram to start off. All right, so because a rectangle is a parallelogram, obviously the opposite sides are parallel by definition, okay? Now, let's go into those four properties that we learned after we know something's a parallelogram, what's something else that we know about it from last time? What's one of those four properties? Okay, opposite angles are congruent. What else? What else is something we know about a parallelogram from last time? Again? Okay, diagonals bisect each other. More. You guys have said the opposite sides are equal, the diagonals bisect each other. What are the other two? Uh, okay. And so you don't have to write the interior part because we don't really consider the exterior, but consecutive angles are supplementary. And there's one more you guys haven't said yet. That opposite angles are congruent, the diagonals bisect each other, consecutive angles are supplementary. What's something else that we know about a parallelogram? You guys kind of said them in a different order than we learned them, so it might be confusing you on which one we missed. But what's, what's another property? You guys said it before when we were talk talking about it, we haven't said it yet in this list. No, that's how you show that it would be a parallelogram. I'm talking about properties in particular. Nope, that is not a property. That is something you can use to prove that it is a parallelogram. I'm talking about the four main properties. You guys have given me opposite angles are congruent, diagonals bisect each other, consecutive angles are supplementary. You're missing the most. Opposite sides are congruent. You guys told me that they're parallel. And number one, because that's the definition, but they're also equal. So opposite sides 
sides as a se two separate ideas. Opposite sides are congruent. Both of them. Both pairs. Right, so again, these are the four like main properties that we talked about, and the one that I wrote first is just the definition of a parallelogram. Right, so all these things are true about a rectangle because a rectangle is a parallelogram. But there's also one extra thing. Right, now this thing I'm about to write here, this does not work for every parallelogram. It will work for a rectangle, a parallelogram that is a rectangle. Right, so this extra thing that we know about a rectangle is that the full diagonals. are congruent. I'm going to draw you a picture to show what I mean. The full diagonals are congruent. Okay. Write that down. Now, up till this point, all that we knew about diagonals was that they bisected each other. So when we saw a run-of-the-mill parallelogram, we knew that these two were equal and these two were equal, right? That's what we knew. But now I'm telling you that for a rectangle, not only do they bisect each other, but the full lengths are equal. So for a regular parallelogram, it might be 2, 2, 3, 3. But for a rectangle, the full length has to be equal. So what do you know about all the halves? They're, they're all congruent. So instead of having one mark and then two marks, they're all actually one mark, like this. Yeah, so yeah, so this one's taking, it's taking something and making it more specific, I like that question, yeah. So for this one, because the full lengths of the diagonal, the full diagonals are equal, that means that all the halves are equal. So now when you guys are seeing this kind of situation, you can say that all these little halves are equal because the full lengths are equal. So this is what the picture would look like, but do remember that the entire diagonals are equal as well. So this, this picture is basically taking both of those two ideas together and mixing them. Um, but do remember that the one other thing we know about a rectangle is that the diagonals, the full lengths are equal. All right, so now we're going to apply those properties to these pictures right here. See if we can solve within a rectangle. All right, so this first one says ABCD is a rectangle. So I have to tell you that first off. We know that, oh, here, let's write in the letters. A, B, C, D. Now the reason why I left it blank is so that when you guys have to draw a picture for yourself, whether it's a just regular parallelogram or rectangle, when they, got, when they give you the name, you start in any corner you want, but you have to go in a clockwise order to name the shape. You can't go A, B, and then shoot over here, C, D, right? You have to go in a circle when you're naming the letters. Otherwise, you're going to get everything mixed up. So it says that A, C, B, so in order to create that angle, I have to draw this right here. So A, C, B, this is 38. And I want to find the measure of the AC, the corner being right here, so that's X, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm working with angles here. So what's something that we know about angles in a rectangle? Okay, opposite angles are congruent. But I'm not working with full opposite angles right now. I'm only working with parts, so let's, let's keep exploring. What else do I know about angles? Angles, because so we're talking about angles here. We know that opposite angles are equal. What else? Hmm? They're all 90. That'd be helpful. Where could I put a 90? That would help us along with this question. Put one right here. How does that help me solve this question? Because we know that consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive angles are not going to help me here. Oh, put it on 36. Put it. What, what did I do when I drew that line? You went through 90 degrees. What does? So 90 is also 30. Okay, so when I drew the line, it cut the rectangle in half. What shape did it create? Okay, what do I know about the angles in a triangle? All equal. They all equal? Yes, they all equal to 180. So when you guys are working, I know we didn't work with triangles last time, but what they'll often do with rectangle squares and rhombus is when you guys draw a diagonal or two diagonals, it'll split your shape into triangles. So you guys are reverting back to what you know about triangles to help you here. Okay? So this is a little triangle here, one, two, three angles. What do I know about all the angles in a triangle? Cool. They add up to 180. So this is not really using a property of a rectangle except for the fact that the angles are 90 degrees. So this is more just using the definition of a rectangle. 
get you that 90, and then you can use the triangle. So sometimes there's just a little tiny detail that you need about that it's a rectangle, and the rest of it's triangles. That's sometimes what they'll do, right? So this one you can just solve really quickly. What would you guys get for X? 52. There you go. Excuse me? Yes. Um, so I solved it differently, but yeah. I got the same answer. Okay, pop. I put, um, on 38, I put an end X, I put 90 degree angle, because we know that all sides are 90. So you just did this? Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. And then, okay. so, 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 so would you like, by, um, what's it called? I believe it would be opposite interior. Alternate interior, you alternate use the parallel lines, that's cool too. Yeah. So you, you can use, there's a Z here, so you guys can use alternate because these are parallel, it's a parallelogram, right? Because in a rectangle, these are parallel, you can use alternate interior to move the X here and then use uh, complementary. Yeah, that's valid too. There are a lot of different ways you can do it. Just whatever you guys see first. As long as it's valid and you're using the appropriate uh, definition or property for it. Alright, so everybody see how I approach that one? You, oftentimes you can just look at the triangles and work with it that way. But again, if you want to use the properties and shift the information, feel free. Okay? What about this one? We have X, Y, Z, W. Again, pick one corner, commit to one corner, and then go in a circle as you're naming it. The diagonals intersect at O, so make sure you guys know how to draw diagonals like this. This would be point O. And then I'm going to start labeling the picture. So X, O is 6x plus 1, yw, which is this entire diagonal, is equal to 20x minus 30, and I am trying to find the length of a diagonal. Now, in order to find a length of a diagonal, what do I need to know first? What would I have to find before I can actually get a length? Can I just look at this and get an arbitrary number for the length? What would I have to solve for first? X. I have to find X first. Right? So to find the length of a diagonal, I have to find X so I can plug it in. So what relationship would I use? Yes. Uh, 6X plus 1 equals... Wait, what do we need to find? I'm trying to solve for X so I can plug it in to find the diagonal. Oh. Is it? So would it... X, X O, right? Equal to O, Z. Okay, so what do you want me to do? So then you add those two together. Add what? There's nothing written here. You just put another 6X. Okay, you can put another 6X plus 1 since they're equal. You just write it twice. So then you add those two up. Okay. And then they should equal 20X plus minus 30. Yeah, this is our new property of rectangles, right? Our new property of rectangles says that the full length of this diagonal is equal to the full length of this diagonal, but they've also been bisected. So if I know that this is bisected, I can write the 6x plus 1 twice, and then this full length is equal to that full length, so I can add them together. So if I add those, that would be 12x plus 2. So this full diagonal is equal to this full diagonal. Notice how I'm using the word full to remind you that I'm talking about the entire length from one end point to the other. So once you guys get that in, because this will only work in a rectangle for now, you have to make sure that you remember to use that property here. So you can just solve that. So and then add that over. So what's the value of x? Four. Now, what's the question asking for the value of x? Was it? No, it was asking for the length of the diagonal. So once you guys find x, what do you do? Plug it in, and it doesn't matter where. You guys know this diagonal is two x plus, or sorry, 12x plus two, and this one's 20x minus 30. It doesn't matter which one you plug it into because they're both the same. And you can test that. If you can plug it into both, you'll see that they're the same. When you guys plug in 4, let's say you plug it into the easier one, 12, or whichever is easier for you. 12 times 4 is? Nope. 12 times 4, okay. Plus 2. There you go. And you can plug it into the other one as well and get the same answer. Alright, so good catch. Alright, questions on those two? Next little set here before we go on to rhombus and square. All right, a rectangle is shown if QC is 2x plus 1 and TC is 3x minus 1. Find the value of x. <coughs> so, what property would I use here and how? What can you guys tell me about what's going on here? 
Um, don't um, 2x plus 1 equal 3x minus 1? Why? Because. Henry is uh, suggesting that this is equal to this, but I want to know why. Anybody tell me what we know about rectangles that might support that? Okay, so we know the full diagonal of our congruent, so I know this is equal to this. I know that. We know our field is equal to Okay, so I know this is equal, sorry, that's going to get too confusing. But I know that this segment is equal to this segment. What else do I know? That those are equal. Okay, so I know the full lengths are equal, and I know that these two are equal and those two are equal. So how does that lead me to saying that 2x plus 1 is equal to 3x minus 1? Uh, we're not working with opposite sides right now. Let's talk about it. Remember that picture I showed you uh, with the properties where I showed you guys this little picture where I took property, the diagonals bisect each other, and the full lengths are equal? How did I label the little sections? They each had one mark, right? So taking taking the idea of the full length being equal and then bisecting each other, putting those together, means that all four of those little segments are equal to each other. So you're right, Henry. You're right that the 2x plus 1 is equal to the 3x minus 1. It's exactly right that these two are equal, but the only reason that happens is because the full lengths are equal. So this is only true for a rectangle. You can't do that for just any random parallelogram. It'll only work for the rectangle because of that extra property we know. The full length are equal. You guys can go up. Another way you guys can do this is if you guys are not sure about that, you could do put another 3x minus 1 here, another 2x plus 1 right here, add them together and set them equal. That's a, a little bit longer, but you'll still get the same answer and it's using the same properties. All right? So you can go ahead and do this. You would get x is equal to. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Because yeah. you subtract the x over here and then you add the one. x equals 2. All right, so remember, keep that property in mind where the full lengths are, or sorry, the full diagonals are congruent, because that'll help you. If you need to go the long way, that's fine too, adding more information. All right, now over here, we're going to work with the angles exclusively. Okay, so this one says that angle one, I'm just going to write over it, this is 30, and I'm trying to find the measure of angle two. All right, so clearly they've drawn the diagonals, so we're working with triangles here, so I want to focus on the uh, triangle aspect. So uh, what do we call these again, these little lines? Okay, what do we know about the diagonals in a rectangle? One more time. Okay, we know the full lengths are congruent. What else do we know? Okay, so with the full lengths being equal and them bisecting each other, how can I label them? Like I was just explaining. You can label the vertical angle thing. You're not going to need vertical angles. We're going to say in one triangle because the 30 is here and the 2 is here. You guys see how this is the triangle we're going to be using? You can see that? The diagonals split this up into four triangles. And the one triangle that has angle one and angle two is this one right here that I've highlighted. You see that? Isosceles, right? So taking that idea of the diagonals being congruent and bisected with all of them being equal, what kind of triangle is this? It's isosceles. What do we know about these two angles right here? They're congruent, right? So that can help you find angle two. Again, a lot of the stuff with rectangles and splitting it into um, triangles is just boiling down to triangle stuff. You just got to know what kind of triangles. So if I know this is isosceles because of those diagonals, um, I could say this is angle 2 again. So I could say 30 plus angle 2 plus angle 2 is equal to 180. All right, you can solve that. You can subtract the one, oh, sorry, you can subtract 30 away and divide by 2. Just find one of them. So what would that value be? Seventy-five, yeah. You guys have worked with isosceles triangles before. It's just uh, another situation. So make sure you guys are. If you're not sure how to use the property of a rectangle to help you, you're probably just using a triangle. All right. So if you're, it's not a straightforward application of a rectangle property, look for where you could use a triangle instead, and it'll probably become aware to you. All right, so angle six is 57 here, and I'm trying to solve for angle four. What triangle 
what I use that involves that 57 and that 4? Is it one of the small, one of the small ones here? No. Big what? What kind of triangle? It would be half, right? See how I can draw this triangle right here? This triangle that's inside of the rectangle has the 57, has the angle 4. It also has another angle that we know something about. A 90. That's using our definition of a rectangle, right? We can't really do anything without the fact that that's 90. Okay. So because this is a rectangle, and it said everything is a rectangle, so you're allowed to assume that here. It tells you in the directions. Um, this is a right angle. So how can I solve for angle 4? You have to add up to the question. Okay. So I can take the two angles, 57 and 90, add that to angle 4. What should they all three add up to? 180. I'm boiling down to triangles, something you're a little bit more familiar with. So I can take the two angles I know, add those together, and then subtract that from 180 to get the 4. Which I can't remember. 33. Okay. Okay, so again, this is just practice on recognizing where those triangles are. Again, triangles can be really helpful if the properties aren't working straightforward for you. Alright, then for this one, it says angle 5 is 16. Right here. Now, is there any triangle that has both angle 5 and just angle 3 at the same time? So what you guys are going to have to do is kind of work with two different triangles to shift information a little bit closer. Um, what angle could I find using the 16? The angle of the other side of that triangle. This one? Yeah. How? Using yeah. So using isosceles, right, because all these are equal. This shallow triangle right here is isosceles. So that means this is also 16 because those angles are equal. So what I'm trying to do is localize the information. I'm trying to push all the information closer to angle 3. And so that's how I can use this triangle to do that. If, again, if you guys aren't sure, by default, you can just add these little markings in there by default. And then you may or may not need them. But in this situation, I did. So I moved the 16 closer. Now that 16 is next to 3, what, really, what relationship can I use in a rectangle? Okay, so what do I know about these, this little corner right here? It's 90, right? So what's the relationship between angle 3 and the 16? Say one more time. Well, let's write the forward equation, not the one that solves backwards. The 16 plus the 3. 16 plus angle 3 should equal what? 90, they're complementary. So that's, again, using the definition of a rectangle, this corner right here is 90 degrees. So if I know this is 16 and I don't know that, I can just, like you were saying, Austin, I can subtract the 16 from the 90 to get what angle 3 is. So that would be 74. Right? So that was your, your practice with using the properties of a rectangle, which they're all the same as a parallelogram plus that extra, the diagonal being congruent part. Um, and then also uh, practice with how to use triangles. Triangles can sometimes be the only way you can solve besides using a property or exclusively using a property of rectangle. So please get used to looking for and knowing how to use those triangles. All right, now we're going to switch to rhombus and square. Rhombus and square. So a rhombus. Do you guys know what a rhombus is? If you guys have heard that, no, it's a straight word. Like, it, yeah, it's kind of like, it's not usually drawn vertically like a diamond typically is, but it, well, I did not draw that very well. Try. It's basically a slanty square. Still didn't draw that very well. But a rhombus, by definition, okay, is a parallelogram. They all start with that. So remember, these are all special types of parallelograms. So a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So a rectangle is a parallelogram with four congruent angles. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So this is like that question you were talking about, right? Where they were all... So it's still a parallelogram. It's just that not only are opposite sides equal, they're all equal to each other, which is still opposite sides being congruent. It's just they all have that relationship together now, too. So because it's a parallel, and I didn't want to waste time writing it over and over and over again, but properties one through five for a rhombus are the properties of a parallelogram. We already wrote those for the rectangle.
So everything we learned last class still apply here. Opposite sides are equal. Opposite angles are equal. Uh, consecutive side, oh, sorry, consecutive angles are uh, supplementary. The diagonals bisect each other. The opposite sides are parallel. All those things that we just talked about for a rectangle two, everything that's true about a parallelogram is true for this guy as well. Great. Now, a rectangle had that one extra property that the full length di the full length of the diagonals were equal. A rhombus has two extra. Okay. It is not true for a rhombus that the whole diagonals are congruent. That's only a rectangle. Okay? A rhombus has two new ideas here. Right? These are a little bit trickier to remember, but um, a rhombus does have two new ones. So for a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. Now this is unique to a rhombus. It is not true for a rectangle. This is for a rhombus. The diagonals are perpendicular. So if you guys wanted to draw a little illustration of that, if you draw a teeny little rhombus here, I draw a little 90 degrees on the inside. So perpendicular means that where the diagonals cross inside the shape, they make a little 98, 90 degree angle right here. Okay, so if you want to draw a little illustration of that. <laughs> Right? So that's one of our unique properties for it, is the diagonals are perpendicular. The other one is the diagonals bisect opposite angles. That's the other unique property for a rhombus. Diagonals bisect opposite angles. I'm going to draw a little illustration for this one, too. So I'm just going to draw one diagonal. Right, now this property, it says that the diagonal bisects opposite angles, so that means it would look like this, right? Where the diagonal crosses or cuts through the angle, it cuts the angle in half. And it's true for both diagonals, but I don't want the picture to be too messy, so wherever the diagonal cuts through, it cuts that angle in half. For both of them. I'm just going to throw one but for both of them. All right, so these two new ideas, these are unique for a rhombus. It's not true for a rectangle. Um, but for a rhombus, in addition to the things we learned last class for a parallelogram, we also have the diagonals are perpendicular and the diagonals bisect opposite angles. Okay? Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at these questions with rhombus um, and see if we can solve using the properties. And again, just like we did for a rectangle, if it splits it into triangles, maybe that's easier to work with, the triangles instead of the properties, but we'll just take a look and see. All right, A, B, C, D is a rhombus. We are trying to find the measure of B, A, C. So the center letter tells you where the vertex of the angle is. So B, A, C, I'm going to mark that with an X, okay? This is what I know. So, what do you guys think? What's something that I know about a rhombus? Sometimes with these questions, you get, just got to filter through the ideas that you guys know <coughs> about the shape. So what's something you guys know about a rhombus? The diagonals bisect opposite angles, all right? So if I have one diagonal here, I know that this is equal to this, and I know this is equal to this, right? What else do I know? Tell me other things about a rhombus. I don't have both diagonals, though, so that's not helpful. Tell me what you guys know about the angles of a rhombus. We know they've been bisected by this diagonal. What else do I know about them? Opposite angles are congruent. So let's take those two ideas together, right? If I know that this full angle is equal to this full angle, but they've both been cut in half, what would go here? Okay. What is this full angle? Okay. So what's this full angle? No, no. If this is a two, what's this full angle? Okay. And then you guys told me using that diagonal, it splits it in half. So what's half of 82? So what's the value of x? 41. <laughs> Alright, so we use two ideas together. We use the fact that these two angles, full angles, are equal to each other, but they've also been cut in half. So that makes x equal 241. 
There are so many different ways you guys can solve this question. Another way you guys can do it is because it is a rhombus, all the sides are equal, like this, which means that this right here is an isosceles triangle. You guys see that? Half of the shape is an isosceles triangle, so that means these two angles are equal by default. So they're equal, x equals 41. All right, there are a lot of, you, you can use triangles, you can use the property of a rhombus, you can use triangle and property of rhombus together. They're all so, there are so many different ways you guys can do this, right? So just whichever one, pick the path that makes sense to you, follow it till you get to the final answer, and you'll be fine. You don't have to kind of stretch your thinking to try to use a different strategy. Just use the one that works for you as long as it's valid. Okay, does everybody see how I did that one? Okay, this one again, we're gonna name it, so K, L, M, O. Remember you pick one corner, commit to one corner, and then you go around in a circle to name the letters in the same way they've been written in the directions. We know this is a rhombus. The measure of angle O is 112, and I'm trying to find the measure of L, K, M. So to create L, K, M, I actually have to draw a diagonal. K is the center of that angle, but it goes to M, so I have to draw that extra line. All right, so what do I know about a rhombus that can help me here? Um, o and L are equal. Okay, so I can move the 112 here. Very nice. Oh, oh. All sides are equal. I know all the sides are equal because it's a rhombus by definition. Yes, honey? You can make, um, you can split it in half and have it a triangle. Okay, so we can split it in half and just look at a triangle because now that you move the 112, the X and the 112 are in one triangle, right? Yes. What kind of triangle does that happen to be? Isosceles, huh? So how could I use that? If it's isosceles, what do I know? Not only are the sides equal, the bottom, the base angles are equal, right? These two. So I can put another x there. So then, within the triangle, you have two x's added to the 112. Should be 180. Subtract 112, divide by two. Yes. 34. 34. 34? 30, 34? Yes, yeah, sir. Sorry. I no, think I lost my school drawing. I think it is. 34. Yep, that's right. All right, so there we go. We use the properties of a rhombus and those triangles together. Is there another way I could have done this? Did anybody see another route? I can show you one. So the, the 112 was originally here, yes? The X was here, right? What does the diagonal do to this angle? <coughs> Splits in half, so I can put another X here. What do I know about consecutive angles in a rhombus? Yeah, consecutive angles are equal to 180, so I can do the 112 plus X plus X equals 180. You can use consecutive angles too. You can use consecutive angles, you can use alternate interior if you want to use the Z. There are all sorts of different ways you guys can do this, right? It's just whatever one you guys see first. And then plow ahead as long as it's valid. All right, what about this next one? All right, we're good on time. So what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you guys um, think about these two on your own individually. I want you guys to think about this one, see if you can generate an idea. Think about this one, see if you can generate an idea. And then once you guys have some thinking of your own, I want you guys to collaborate, see if your thinking matches the person next to you. See if you guys can come up with an answer for both of those, and I'll check to see if you guys did it right. All right, so take a couple seconds just to think about this, see if you can come up with something. They consult with the person next to you to see if they got the same thing. Come up with an answer, and then I'll check to see if you guys got it right. All right, so take a few minutes to go ahead and work on that. Use a 
different strategy to get that answer? I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. Did anybody use a different strategy or did everybody use that one? I'd be curious to see if anybody had a different strategy. Because there is, there is a different strategy. Can you show us? Okay. I think what Paul noticed is that because it's a rhombus, right? Because it's a rhombus and these two sides are equal, using this triangle, you can shift the 15 and 7 here. And then because the diagonal cuts the angle in half, there are two x's there. So it's 57 plus 57 plus 2x equals 180, and then you solve that. Right? Good same answer. So again, there are multiple different routes you guys can take, but whatever route you guys took, did you get 33? Yeah? Good. Uh, who wants to come up and do the next one? Zero. Anybody want to try the zero? should have been 2.5 and y should have been 17.5. Everybody get that? Cool. Another way to do this would be a system, but that would be messy. So don't force yourself to use a system. If you can just keep one variable when you're working, do that. You could do 3x plus 10 equals y. That's fine, and that's true. But when you're solving for x, just try to keep x by itself if you can. Sometimes you can't avoid it, but if you can, just keep the x's together and write a relationship there, then you can transition to y. All right, so everybody okay with those two? All right, go ahead and, well, let's just really quickly go through these ones so that we can get to the square. So this next one says the perimeter of a rhombus is 68. So what do I know about a rhombus that can help me with that perimeter? All sides are equal. All the sides are the same, right? And if the perimeter is 68, then how does that help? Divide by four. Okay, you can divide by four which would give you 17. Okay, so each side is 17. All right, uh, BS, which is right here, is 8, and I'm trying to find the length of SC. Right there. All 
right. Oh. What do you guys think? Oh. Yes, Henry. Um, it's um, since you're all right, since since all sides are equal, uh-huh. then you'd know that it would be. I think it's an equilateral triangle. No. No. We do not know it's equilateral. We can say it's isosceles, but we can't say that it's equilateral. Isosceles. Yeah. Because I just. Um, you can say that these two are the same, but that doesn't mean with the right. diagonal added on that it's right. the same either. I know that too. Yes? Is it A C? No. And I know that's something you guys are going to want to be tempted to do um, because we said bisect, right? We said that the diagonals bisect each other. But can I say that this section is equal to that section? What shape does that work for? What shape did we see that said that all four of those are equal? A re- is this a rectangle? No. That property that you guys use for rectangle, you cannot use here. That only works for a rectangle. You cannot use it here. You have to do something else. And it does involve angles, actually. It's not, and yeah, it does involve angles, actually. It's not because we know that the diagonals are perpendicular, right? So we know, or sorry, we know that the diagonals are bisected. So we know that this is eight and we know that's x, but we don't know the relationship of the diagonals to each other in terms of length. But what relationship do we know about the diagonals that's special for a rhombus? Uh, not perpendicular. Yeah, I accidentally gave that away on accident. They're perpendicular. So how does this give me momentum to find x? I know this is eight. I know this is X, I know this is 17. What kind of triangle is this? Oh, this one right here. Right triangle. Right triangle? That has two sides looking for a third? Oh, yeah, you can do that one. Wait, isn't that, um, isn't that? Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. So when you guys are working with a rhombus, because you have a 90 degree angle, these are not only isosceles for half of a rhombus, a fourth of a rhombus is a right triangle. And so sometimes you guys will be expected to use right triangle rules, which we learned in unit seven. That's why seven become, comes before eight, All right? So for this one, yes, you have to use Pythagorean theorem, eight squared, sorry, x squared plus eight squared equals 17 squared. Please make sure the hypotenuse, which is represented by the 17, is in the C position with your formula. And then you can use Pythagorean theorem, which will ultimately get you to 15, once you've solved. Okay? So maybe put a little star on this one. Right? Triangle to remind yourself. Okay? Not only are is half of a rhombus an isosceles triangle, and that can help you solve for angles, but you also have to know that a fourth of a rhombus is a right triangle, and that will be really helpful. Okay, so take note of that. All right, our last two of the rhombus before we move into a square. So for this one, uh, BAC, which is 28 degrees right here, I'm trying to solve for X, which is right there. How would I do it? Sorry, X is right here. How would I do it? Well, first of all, what kind of shape is it? It's a rhombus. How do I know it's a rhombus? Yeah, so this is practice. The directions don't say what kind of shape it is, so sometimes you have to look at it to know what shape it is first. So because all the sides are the same, it's a rhombus. So how do I know what the measure of angle X is? Yes, Jonathan? Very good. If it's a rhombus, it's a parallelogram. So, 28. Don't forget that, right? They won't always have the little parallel symbols on there, but if you guys know that it's a rhombus, you can then say it's a parallelogram, which means those sides are parallel. Okay, so you can add the markings using that line of thinking. So alternate interior. There's another way you guys can do it, right? You can say that uh, because half of the rhombus is isosceles, you can put a 28 here, right? And because the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other, it means those two are equal, which means x is 28. Again, there's lots of different ways you can do this. All right, what about this one? I know that angle A, which is right here, A is right here, that is 16x plus 6, and I want to solve for the value of x. Good. In a rhombus, this is a rhombus because all four sides are the same. In a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. Remember that, that extra little rule for a rhombus? So I know that 16x plus 6 is equal to 90. And I can solve that. Five point two five.
Alright, so what you guys have to remember about a rhombus is not only does everything about a parallelogram apply, we also have those two extra properties. The diagonals are perpendicular, the diagonals bisect opposite angles. Okay? Now remember, that's completely separate from the rectangle. What was the extra thing a rectangle had? So the rhombus had the two extra, the perpendicular and the bisecting of angles. What was the extra property that a rectangle had? The full diagonals are congruent, right? So don't, you have to remember that there's still parallelograms, so all the stuff we learned on day one still applies, but you have to make sure you separate the new ideas between the rectangle and the rhombus so you don't get them mixed up. That's what can be confusing about this unit. So make flashcards, quiz yourself. Make sure you remember those properties. All right, our last one's a square. I know it's a little bit smaller because this one's a little bit more straightforward and basic, right? What's the definition of a square? Uh, Good, you got the first part. A parallelogram with four congruent sides. Equal yeah. With four congruent angles and sides. So I introduced these shapes uh, in the order that I did on purpose, right? A rectangle has only congruent angles. A rhombus has only congruent sides. A square has both congruent angles and sides. So it's like a rectangle and a rhombus had a baby. Compared to the square, okay? So a square has congruent sides and angles together. All right, and the properties of a square is everything we've mentioned up till now. Everything that we just discussed, everything for a parallelogram, everything for a rectangle, everything for a rhombus, everything works for a square. So everything that we've learned up until now, all of that works. So you don't have to worry about a square, like, accidentally saying that something's true about a square that's not everything that we've learned so far is true about a square. Right? All you have to do is make sure that you don't mix up the rectangle and the rhombus ideas, but everything is true for a square. So you can do anything that we've talked about so far for a square. So let's look at this one right here. It says solve for y in the square. Y is referring to this little angle. Uh, no. What? No. You don't want to say it's equal to itself. You don't mean nothing. Oh. Equals what? 90. Okay. So in a square, hopefully you guys know that in a square, that's 90 degrees, right? So 15y, because it's referring to that one angle, it's equal to 90 <laughs> with that definition of a square. All right, so just let's do 90 divided by 15. Get 6. Okay. So that's that. It's pretty straightforward. All right, this next one, A, B, C, D is a square. A, B is 5x plus 2y. A, D is 3x minus y. And B, C is 11. I'm trying to find the value of x only. <coughs> How? Or what property would I be using? Okay, I'm going to be using the system, but what property of a square? All sides are equal. All sides are equal. Okay, so how can I generate these equations? You do 5x. I mean, wait. 5x plus 2y. And then when you also do... It needs to be equal to something. Right. Okay, 11. so you can say, okay. Then what's another equation I can write? 3x minus 1. Equals 11. Yeah, you can use 11 twice. You could say that these are equal to each other. You could do that, but it, you, algebraically you'd have to rearrange the equation. It might make it messy. Um, but you can just use 11 twice because everything's equal, so why not? All right. Now, remember for a system, you need the x, then the y, then the equal sign, then the number, so they're set up already. But would I be able to cancel any variables if I, if I just add down? No. So I need to do a little bit of switching. What would I do to make this work out for me? Multiply the bottom by a 2, because then this, that will make the y positive 2, and then this would be negative 2, so it could cancel. So I'm going to multiply the entire bottom equation by 2, so that would be 6x minus 2y equals 22. Make sure you multiply everything. I'm just going to scribble out the old one. Just multiply everything by 2 in the bottom equation. Then you can add down. So this would be 11x. The y's would cancel nicely. This would be 33. So if I solve for x, what would I get? 
Now, typically for a system, they would ask you to solve for both variables, but for this one, I just want x and then you can stop. Okay? So again, for a rectangle, it's still parallelogram, so everything we've learned so far from day one applies, plus that extra full diagonals are congruent. Make sure you guys are aware that you can use triangles in that scenario. Then for your rhombus, again, everything for parallelogram works, uh, but you have the extra diagonals perpendicular and bisect helps at angles. And for a square, you can use any of that. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah.